Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. This is our 100th episode, and to celebrate, we're asking perhaps the most important science question ever, do trees fart? I mean, if trees farting isn't the ultimate tumble topic, I really don't know what is. We'll get to the bottom of the tree fart mystery, and stay tuned to the end for a special tumble celebration. One thing we've come to believe through 100 episodes of Tumble is that kids' science questions are truly the best questions. We've discovered that often, scientists are asking the same questions, and these questions have fascinating answers. Which is why today we're sharing the story behind a really silly question that leads to some serious science. Here's the question. Mom, do trees fart? Did I just hear, do trees fart? (laughs) Yes. Yes, you did. You heard the three-year-old daughter of Mary Heskel. Mary Heskel's a plant biologist. Her daughter first came up with this question in order to avoid going to bed. She was out of bed and kind of like wiggling around on the ground and then asked whether different things farted. She ran through a list of animals and then turned her attention to plant life. She's like, do trees fart? And I was like, no, they don't, go to bed. Do trees fart? Like, I've literally never thought about that before. That's definitely a new one. (laughs) It was a new one to Mary too. She didn't really think about it when she said no. But as soon as her daughter was finally tucked into bed, she began questioning her answer. And then I went downstairs and I started thinking about it more. And I was like, what if they did? How would we define that? Mary started thinking about it more because she actually studies gases in plants. (laughs) Seriously? (laughs) So I study what's referred to as gas exchange in plants. So what is gas exchange? Gas exchange is how plants take in and release gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen. Mary studies how it works. I went into kind of a spiral, I guess, <laughs> thinking about, A, how do you define a fart, like, just straight up? And then, B, like, would that apply to any of the gas exchange that I'm familiar with? So she's basically like, do I study tree farts? 100%. <laughs> Is Mary actually a tree fart scientist and she didn't know it? (laughs) I kind of imagine it must have been a moment of revelation for her. (laughs) Maybe, maybe. I think it was a moment of deep (laughs) self-reflection. Well, so do trees fart? And is Mary a tree fart scientist? We are going to get the answers to these very important questions. But first, let's ask our listeners to put themselves in Mary's shoes. How do you define a fart? And do you think that trees fart? We'll give you a moment to think, and then we'll find out how tree farts stumped the internet. Pause the podcast if you're in the midst of a deep, scientifically important conversation about what is a fart. Back in our story, Mary is still spiraling, trying to define for herself what a fart is. She starts with the idea that farts are silly. Farting itself is just kind of a a silly noise and a silly smell and all that. So if it was a welcome process, it, it wouldn't lead to so much laughter. It would just be like people would you know, fart all the time. It'd be like, you know, no one would turn their head. So it sounds like she's thinking that the main thing about a fart is that it's a release of unwanted gas. Yeah. And Mary decided that the types of gases she studies are wanted gases or welcome gases. They come from photosynthesis and respiration, which are like the plant version of breathing. Yeah, nobody giggles when you exhale. (laughs) So he's like, no, that's not a fart. It's a basic process. You know, it's not like we're farting when we're breathing. Like, that's not the same. Okay, so she's not a tree fart scientist. I don't think the research I do currently falls under tree farts. Okay, well, so do trees fart? Mary thought they might, but she wasn't exactly sure how. So she turned to the Internet. She posted her daughter's question to social media 
it got a huge response from her fellow scientists and interested fart thinkers. <laughs> they had different answers. A lot of the plant scientists followed a similar thought process that I did. The plant scientists were thinking about those unwanted, maybe fart-like gases that a tree might release. But there was another mode of thought put forth by animal biologists and other leading fart thinkers. Their reasoning had more to do with like, well, do trees have butts? Is the whole tree a butt? <laughs> the, I... Speechless, right? <laughs> it, what, <laughs> I mean, I guess what is a butt? <laughs> when, you, when you think about it. What makes something a butt? Oh, Mary was like, trunks are not butts. They're totally different. I don't think you can force a butt on a tree. <laughs> it would be funny if you could. So I was surprised by the level of conversation that revolved around farts being defined more by like the physical feature of the organism and not the gas that was being expelled. So is it the gas that makes the fart or is it the butt that makes the fart? <laughs> Such a good question. I feel like this is another good place to stop and give our listeners a chance to decide what they think. When we come back, we will meet an actual tree fart scientist and find out what tree farts really are. So if you're deep in a tree butts versus fart gas debate, feel free to pause the podcast. But if you're ready, it's time to meet... A tree fart scientist. Oh, I'm definitely ready. Melinda Martinez measures the gases that come out of the stems or trunks of trees. So I actually measure greenhouse gases, so that includes methane, carbon dioxide, and nitrous oxide. Two out of three of these gases also come out of our butts. And methane and carbon dioxide are things that we emit ourselves as we're farting. <laughs> okay, so trees fart the same gas as the we fart. Yes, we all fart the same farts. <laughs> In the trees, there's no like flapping sound, <laughs> but it's more like a very slow, gradual process. So you would say it's more like silent but deadly. <laughs> it, yeah, it's less like... <laughs> more like... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Melinda defines a fart as kind of the middle ground of the whole plant gas versus animal butt debate. She says a fart happens when a gas has to go from the inside of an organism to outside the organism. It has to go through certain barriers to get through that. And I think that's essentially what a fart would be. Okay, so a fart has to be a gas that's passing through something, be it butt or be it bark. A fart is not defined by sound or stink. So so where do these farts come from? I, I know our farts come from digesting food and kind of like moving through the digestive system, but if a tree doesn't have a digestive system, how does it make the same gas as we do? Well, it's not digestive. It's like a pathway that occurs. Uh, what does she mean by that? A pathway? Well, it's not the tree itself making the gas. It's made by something that lives in the ground beneath it. It becomes initially a gas in the soils because microbes also need to eat. The soil is alive with microscopic organisms called microbes. There are more microbes in a teaspoon of soil than there are people living on Earth. That's a lot of microbes. Yeah, so these little bacteria and other microorganisms digest their food, just like us, and they produce carbon dioxide and methane. The fart gases. The tree sucks up some of these soil microbes as it sucks water through its roots. It travels up the tree and then it is emitted through the stem, like the bark, and then diffuses out into the atmosphere. Okay, so let me get this straight. Microbes make their gases in the soil, and then those gases, like, hitch a ride up in the tree, and then the gases, like, bail out through the bark? Yes, that's how trees fart. That's amazing. So I feel like we've answered our question, but 
now I want to know, like, why study that? Like, beyond calling yourself a tree fart scientist, which is also a good reason. Good question. So these fart gases, carbon dioxide and methane, are also known as greenhouse gases. And if you have too many greenhouse gases, they warm up the Earth's climate. That's how you get what you call that greenhouse effect, because the more these gases you have in the atmosphere, the more likely that the energy from the sun is being trapped. Oh, and greenhouse gases are what's driving climate change. But don't trees fight climate change? Like a like plant a tree to lower your carbon footprint. That's what you do, right? Yeah, generally trees do help fight climate change because they take in carbon dioxide. And tree farts really don't deserve much blame on their own, but they're still a part of the big picture of greenhouse gas emissions on our planet. And if you think about how many trees there are in the world, there's a lot of a lot of greenhouse gases that we're not taking to account. Scientists are trying to predict how much climate change will happen in the future. And to get it right, they need to know every possible source of greenhouse gases, big and small. So basically, they need to know how big a tree fart is. (laughs) Exactly. The size of the fart depends on the environment that the tree is in. And Melinda's focus is trees in wetlands. In forested wetlands, um, it's important to study because you have all these trees in standing water, and so they're kind of acting as straws for these soil-produced gases. So trees are like fart chimneys of the wetlands. Melinda's job is to measure how much gas is coming out of the bark. So I go out in wetlands, and basically I carry a portable gas analyzer. And so I kind of look like a ghostbuster because I'm wearing my chest waders. When there's greenhouse gas... In the wetland forest. <laughs> Who are you going to call? This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is ridiculous that you're making me do. <laughs> this is so Yes, silly. I wrote a tree fart <laughs> ghostbuster song for Marshall to read. I don't know. I don't know about this. <laughs> Anyhow, this portable gas analyzer is basically a clear box that Melinda fastens onto the trees with a bunch of zip ties. It creates a seal around the tree to measure the gas that's coming off it. I also drill into the tree and then measure whatever's inside. So she's basically collecting tree farts, one tree at a time. Exactly. Before we move on from this, I need to tell you that some tree scientists do a cool trick when they drill into a tree. They light the tree fart on fire. You can light tree farts, too? (laughs) Yes, because the methane is so high. So methane is very flammable. And so if you have a high enough uh, concentration of methane inside, and if you put a lighter at the end of that borer, it will stay on fire. That's ridiculous. Is there a scientific reason to do that? It's very flashy. There's no reason. (laughs) All right. Well, good to know that scientists do things just for fun, too. (laughs) Just for giggles. But seriously, don't try that at home. (laughs) Or just ask your friends if they think trees fart and then be like, they do. And you can light them on fire. I mean, if you're a fart scientist, why not have a little fun with it? But tree farts are also serious science. As Melinda says, this research has showed me that even the smallest fart counts. (laughs) So Tree Fart Mystery Solved, our 100th Tumble episode, is in the books. I think that Mary has found peace with her identity. I think that we do know that tree farts exist. And I think we know that we have to keep answering kids' questions. (laughs) (laughs) I'm excited to keep doing that. Speaking of, it's time for our 100th episode socially distanced after party. We invited all of our biggest fans to send in recordings telling us what they love and learn from Tumble. So here we go. Hi, this is Bilal from Egypt. I learned that everything is made of atoms. I like Marshall's jokes. Hello, my name is Charlie. The first episode I've ever listened to is, is, is Pilgrim Falcons. And did I mention my name's Charlie? I'm pretty sure I did. 
My name is Rohan, and I live in Washington, D.C. And I like how Tumble explains the news that's happening in the world. I have yawning about weed out. It's big volcano eruption. Bye. My name is Vala, and I'm six years old. I listen to Tumble before bed, and I also listen to Tumble when we're driving home from school. Hi, my name is Sonia, and what I've learned from Tumble is that plants can communicate with other plants. Um, hello, my name is Dermot, and one thing I've learned from Tumble is that the moon is slowly getting farther away from the Earth. What I've learned from Tumble is that there's many kinds of bacteria in our bodies. My favorite episode was the koala with this different kinds of eucalyptus. Thanks so much to Bilal, Charlie, Rohan, Teddy, Vala, Anya, Dearmid, Landry, and Elijah for sending in their videos and audio for our 100th episode. And of course, thanks to Mary Haskell, Assistant Professor of Ecology at McAllister College, and Melinda Martinez, who's a PhD candidate in the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources at North Carolina State University. Can't get enough of tree farts? Learn more about Melinda's tree fart research on our bonus interview episode. It's available for patrons who pledge $1 or more a month on patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. We have free resources on our website, including that video of tree farts being set on fire. (laughs) Great party trick. (laughs) Again, do not try at home. (laughs) You'll also find out whether Mary's daughter believes in tree farts or not. The answer may surprise you, so check it out at sciencepodcastforkids.com. Claire Glendenning is our intern. Sarah Robertson Lentz is our head of partnerships and made the sassy tootin' tree art for this episode. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote and produced this episode. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I made all the original music for this episode. Tumble is a production of Tumble Media. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for the next 100 stories of Science Discovered.